Good morning. My name is Ellen. I'm really loving this series where we're talking about kind of expanding our understanding uh, of prayer, right? You can't put God in a box. He's a creative God and there are creative ways to connect with him. And one of those that I want to talk about today is musical worship. So he, humans have always had this really interesting relationship with music. In every era of time, in every culture, music has always been a part of the human life. Um, you know, predominantly we use it for entertainment, right? Every genre you can think of exists now. So we use it for entertainment. We use it to teach. Like I was an elementary school teacher for years and boy, we were always singing. You know, you probably have some random knowledge that's tucked away in your head because of some song that you sang as a kid because it helps us remember so much. Um, you know, it invokes all kinds of emotions. Right? Every good movie has a good score. It just brings you in, man. That music is playing and you're like invested. Uh, sometimes I go to the gym and I hate it. But if I have the right playlist, it makes me go a little bit longer, right? We go to football games or basketball games and, and we're like, we're all singing these fight songs and we're getting like all riled up and we're like excited, right? And, you know, it makes us, uh, you know, a crowd full of people singing and it's exciting. Um, Nations use it, right, uh, as a rallying point for, for anthems, um, right? Uh, you have a breakup and there's like that perfect sad song with all the minor chords and you can just cry and cry and get it all out, right? Um, they used to use like drums and stuff in war that it was like this really intimidating uh, feeling that people would get hearing the drums, right? So we, we've always had this really interesting connection to music. Um, you know, but one, one time I went to China and we walked into the church and there were these girls singing the song I had never heard in a language that I don't know at all. And it was one of the most powerful encounters with God I've ever had. Because music, it transcends language, right? There, there are some musical pieces that, that have no words at all that might surprise you that you would have such a response to them, right? It's because of what music does uh, to us and for us. And, you know, people will be like, well, Ellen, you're musical like you're a singer, so it's easier for you to incorporate music into worship, right? Um, like, so if you're not musical, maybe it, it's more of a struggle and that musical worship can sometimes seem more like an extra or like a bonus, like an add-on, maybe like, you know, if there's time, right? Uh, but that's not biblical. That's not biblical. God has uh, intentions for musical worship, and it, like all other created things, was meant to glorify Him. And so it's our job as believers to redeem it uh, for its original purpose, right? That we can enjoy it, but it, ultimately it's for um, praising God, right? And uh, the Old Testament, the whole book of Psalms, it's full of beautiful poetry and, and songs. Uh, these these really like honest songs full of real human emotion that David brings before God. Um, so there's really low points and there's really high points and there's these Selah moments where there's no words but they would just play the music and, and people would hear from God and and, and sit with him um, in those times. You know, and in Second Kings they said, bring in the musician. And as soon as the musician started playing, it says that the hand of God fell on them and they heard from him. Um, the Levites had really specific instruction from God about how to incorporate music into um, the worship at the temple um, in Exodus. So the Israelites cross the Red Sea on dry ground and Miriam, Moses' sister, leads all these people in this unbelievable song of praise, right? Can you imagine having been there, like, experienced this miracle and there's like a million people who just start praising God in song? I mean, wow. Uh, the New Testament, it's all over the New Testament. Paul uh, talks about it in, especially in Ephesians and Colossians, he uses it uh, as an example of like an identifier for believers right? That it, it's something that sets us apart from the rest of the world, the way that we have redeemed music and, and we honor God with it. Um, it's meant to be participated in, 
right? That's clear uh, in the early church that uh, it's not something to be observed or, or something that you watch other people do, but, but God is asking you to participate in it. Um, and in Acts, you know, Paul is in prison and he starts singing to God, singing these hymns and the spirit of the Lord comes and there's power and the prison doors open up. Okay, so something special happens when we praise God. And in that example, I love it because it was such an offering, right? Like it was a sacrifice of praise in, in that time. And God responded to him because he loves it. Um, in the New Testament also, Paul talks about like when we worship, that we're to sing from our spirit. I just love the thought of that. Like there's obviously something deeper going on right here. He's saying, sing from your spirit. So my spirit is engaged, but also God has really specific requests. Um, when you look at the word praise in the Old Testament, we just see praise, but really there's a bunch of different meanings uh, in the original language. So that word praise might mean, you know, lift your hands and praise to me. Like that's something that God says to do. Uh, it might mean kneel. It might mean clap your hands, right? It might mean shout to the Lord. So there's there's different um, requests for my physical body during worship, okay? So my spirit is engaged, my physical body is engaged, and my mind is engaged. You know, the science on what happens to the human brain when they're listening to music or playing music is fascinating, okay? Fascinating. There's no part of our brain that music doesn't affect, okay? So we were clearly meant to respond to music. And I love it because it's just this little glimpse of heaven, right? In heaven, there's continuous singing for eternity. And you know, when we come together on a Sunday and we lift the name of Jesus and we sing the truth uh, uh, of the word and, and there's just beautiful music happening, it's an experience and, and it's just this little glimpse of what we have to come. And, and I love that. It, it really is for us. It's a gift. Musical worship is a gift for us because we were intended um, to be able to release things in music, right? This is where the prayer comes in. You know, the uh, Romans or Hebrews, I can't remember, uh, says that the Spirit of God is interceding for us, which is incredible, right? But um, the Bible says that the spirit prays in groans too deep for words. Like, isn't that incredible? Like, I don't. How do you do that? I don't know what that is, right? I I, I have a cap on my language as a human, right? I, I have a cap on what I can express, and honestly, I'm no poet, and so I can't even like write a good song. Like, I don't even know how to put it down on words, but. The Lord has given gifts to different people, and so He will share uh, a word with someone, they write it in a song, and I hear it, and I'm like, yes, that is exactly how I feel, right? It's this release for me to be able to say, I didn't have the language to tell you that that uh, that I love you, right? I, I didn't know how to say it in words of, of my weakness or my need for you or uh, my awe of you, but these songs, they give me language and sometimes the music itself is what I need um, to be able to have that, mon that honest uh, moment with God. And, and His Word says to sing a new song, right? In every situation, his mercies are new every morning, and in all seasons of my life, I will sing unto the Lord. I will never run out of things to say. Uh, I'll never run out uh, of new things to say about about the Lord. So that's my challenge to you this morning. You know, some of you this is easy, but some of you it is a sacrifice for you to open your mouth and sing, and be really vulnerable before the Lord. Because man, music makes us vulnerable. Emotions can be uncomfortable sometimes, and so. You know, maybe for you saying, singing, I love you, Lord, is vulnerable, but I'm telling you to let the Lord in. It will change your prayer life if this is something that you can incorporate into it. So my challenge to you today, find a song that you love. Ask the Lord, what song do you want me to sing to you today? What does he want to hear from you? Um, and, and sing to the Lord as an offering of prayer and connection. Amen. <laughs>